Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Hello, this is Sylvia Pierce on The Liberating Secret. I'm so glad you're with us today. And I hope you saw our previous program, but if not, we're starting all over again. And, and with my very special friend, Bill Bauer, from out here in Pasadena, California. I came all the way out here with all the equipment and my technician to be able to video this precious man that I have loved for years. He's a wonderful friend of mine. And we have really seen the same truths together, haven't we, yes, Bill? Yes, we sure have. We have. We're like on the <laughs> same page. We are. <laughs> So, and he's a great man of God. He uh, uh, goes to a prophetic church out here. No. It's a wonderful church. Yes, it's the a wonder, gathering place. A gathering place, mm -hmm. uh, pastored by wonderful pastors, Rick and Pam Wright, who know these things, and they've just been so, and in, in, they're just incredible people. Well, yeah. they are, and they've just asked him to do a sermon, I think about a month ago, mm -hmm. and which was recorded and is on uh, Spirit Radio, well, it's on theliberatingsecret.org and look under the newsletter, the September newsletter, you will hear his, this talk he did, which is absolutely fabulous. After the talk, I thought, I've got to get out of here, Bill. <laughs> and we're, we've got to tape you. I've been wanting to do this forever. So, oh. But the common denominator between us, really, is the missionary, Norman Grubb. Yes. I mean, he, he certainly shook us up from the beginning and oh. still shakes us up yes and we're still excited about what he he taught us but not not just he because we don't we don't have a head trip just a head yes. understanding or in a mental ascent <laughs> this has become a living reality to both of mm. both of us and actually for over 30 something years it's uh, been a living yes. reality to me yes and so but the interesting thing when it's that living and that full of spirit and that full of truth <laughs> then every time you talk about it, it seems like, gosh, we get bored talking about the same thing over and over. We mm. never get bored, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't, because <laughs> it's just so full of dynamite. And what I love about this man is he's so entertaining, number one. I mean, his face <laughs> is just unbelievable, so you just fall in love with him right away. And and he's entertaining, but and so he draws you in. But the wonderful thing is, then all of a sudden you've been bombed with an atomic bomb and you don't even know it. It sneaks up on you. So that's what I've always loved saying that. But he's had great spiritual experiences too. He's a great spirit man. So um, let's talk about some of your experiences that you've had. Yeah. Um, well, when Sylvia said that we're not really, this is something that comes by Revelation, Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. I think you all know that verse. And uh, so it's not a mental head trip. It's easy to uh, to have a doctrine about something like this and say all the right things and not have it revealed to you inside. And uh, I've never been much myself into w head trips. I want to. I've always wanted to experience God, and that's what drew me to Norman the first time when I met him. Uh, he, I could tell he was experiencing what he was talking about. Uh, I could tell he was experiencing and had a revelation of union with God. I could just tell it looking at him. Mm -hmm. I could tell for him it, it was not some mental, nice little trip he was going to get everyone into. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a living reality to him. And that's what really, I think, drew me uh, to him when I, when I first met him. Um, he was, um, uh, I'll just uh, tell you, you know, that first time he came to the Vineyard Christian Fellowship and he shared those things. I then wanted to, he, he came to several home groups at our church um, after that, and I would try to go to every one because I was so hungry to know that another was living and how does how is one in union with, with Christ? And, and I was just drawn to know an inner Jesus, an inner Christ in me. I was drawn, in a sense, inside. I was wanting to know, I knew the Holy Spirit came on me, and I loved all of that, his presence, the feeling of his presence, his anointings. People talk about mantles coming on you. I love all that kind of thing. But I was also drawn to Christ in me. And 
I, I would tell a few of my couple of my friends, and they would smile and politely and think, "Oh, that's cool, Bill." But I could tell they weren't drawn the same way. That was cool. I didn't expect them to. I knew it was God drawing me that way. Um, but so when Norman came around, I knew he had keys of revelation that I didn't have, and I wanted to know what it was that he knew that I didn't know. And so um, we had a leaders meeting of vineyard uh, leaders that came together, and he would always free people up from legalism and law and self-effort, them thinking they had to try to do it. So I'll just give you a couple of illustrations. This one, I remember this one pastor's wife came up to win the meeting, this was in front of meeting, meeting and said, Norman, um, the Bible's dried up on me. It's dried up on me. I've lost my desire to read it. I don't know what to do. And he would say the opposite of what you'd think he would say. But he said, I'm going to imitate him. I always love imitating he's him. He's kind of fun. He's <laughs> too. Norman would say this, you know, he's English and he's in his 80s at the time. Said, oh, wonderful, my dear. Wonderful, the Bible's dried up on you. Now tell the Lord you won't read it until he makes you and take no condemnation. I thought, what? And um, it, was, it was some time after that, I realized that a lot of wonderful things that we do, we've made religious rules of. Yes. Reading our Bible, praying, fasting, all wonderful things that the Holy Spirit will cause us to do. But we, we make rules out of those things. But Norman took the heat off this dear woman. She smiled. And he, he, I love that verse in Ezekiel. I will put a new spirit within you and cause you to walk in my ways. So he said, just tell the Lord that you've lost that desire and tell him to give you that desire to read the Bible. But in the meantime, don't take any condemnation. But trust him that he'll give you that desire to read the Bible. And that took the heat off her. Yes and started to give her a little inkling that it wasn't performance. I always tell people, Sylvia, um, uh, it's not our performance. It's his performance, so to speak, on the cross mm. uh, that made us accepted in the beloved, that we're already accepted in the beloved That's by right. Jesus. If we never did another Christian thing the That's rest true. of our life, he's already done it. His finished work That's has right. done it. His blood shed, his body broken mm. has done it. And it is finished, and he's he's done the performance. He's done all. He's done the work. <laughs> you know, the, the person came to Jesus Christ and said, "How do we do the works of God?" And he said, "This is the work of God: believe on Him whom He has sent." That's the main work: is believing mm -hmm. on the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's you right. know, that's really all the human being can do mm. is receive. I say we live by receiving, not by achieving. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Let's hear some did, more. Of did you hear that one? That was a good one, okay, everyone. <laughs> back again. Say that he always again, so. makes me stop. That's good. <laughs> we live by receiving and not by achieving. Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> it's good. great. That's good, right really that good. Down. <laughs> um, another leader came to Norman in that meeting mm -hmm. and said, but Norman, shouldn't we try to live the Christian life? This is his, his response. Oh, no, my dear. Trying is Satan. And Norman would always give us, usually would give a scripture to back up what he said. And he gave the scripture in Romans 7. I think it's 717. I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe I got the wrong script right in there where um, Paul says, when I would do good, evil is present with me. And Norman said, why would the Apostle Paul say when he would do good? When he would do good, evil is present. Why would he say that? Because you trying to do good in your own willpower is really the devil. Whoa. It's really the spirit of error, Whoa. replacing Christ. Yes. Yeah. Well, people look at Romans 7 and they think a lot of people teach it. Well, either Paul wasn't even saved when he wrote Romans 7 or... We always stay in Romans 7 because what it leads to is then if it's not me that's doing, uh, that's, um, if it's not me, then it must be my old nature or my sinful flesh that's causing me to do the evil. That's right. And we've got to really clear that up, Bill, yeah, because that's, that's, none of those things are true, you know. We, 
Norman always told us this, and it is true, that we don't have our own nature, do we? No. The human being <laughs> is only a derivative being, a dependent being, and uh, we derive our nature from the one who lives in us. That's right. So since Christ lives in us, then we're deriving our nature from him. The human being has no nature of its own. Actually, the human being is neutral. That's right. It's a neutral vessel. And we never have been independent, though, no, have we? No, we haven't. No. No, uh, Sylvia is sharing, you know, just, you know, we, we talked about the cup of coffee just mm -hmm. at the end of the last yeah. session. The cup or the human vessel, the Bible calls us vessels. You're either a vessel of wrath or you're a vessel of mercy. But the human vessel doesn't have a nature of its own. It doesn't have a life of its own. It, it doesn't have a power source of its own. It's just an empty vessel. Now, now it's really never really empty, but you've got to know you're in what sense. You're empty of an independent self. You're empty of an independent self, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a source, a nature that thinks it can live the Christian life. That's right but it'll cost you everything to know that. It'll cost you everything to know you're a vessel. It really will. Mm -hmm. Someone said to me that the other day when I was sharing this, I was in a meeting, he says, oh, I'm more than a vessel. And I thought, you know, no, you've really got to see you're a vessel and you've got to get beaten up a lot to see that in and of yourself, you're nothing. The Bible says in Galatians, it does. if a man thinks he's something, being nothing, he deceives himself. He it's deceives deception. himself. It's a deception. I, I mean, that's a heavy thing. Yes, it is. If you if if the vessel thinks he's it's more than a vessel, an empty vessel, mm -hmm. you're deceiving yourself, that's and right. you've got to know that. But the, but the problem is, folks, it'll cost you everything to know you're a vessel, that you're nothing in and of yourself. And you know why I think that's true is because we've been brainwashed from the beginning to think of ourselves as more than a vessel, as really the coffee instead of the cup and the performer mm. instead of the receiver, you right. see? Mm. And uh, we, we think of ourselves as the motivating force within our own self and the power within our own self to produce the fruits of the, the Bible says the fruits of the spirit. It doesn't say the fruits of the vessel. It says the fruit of the spirit. So only the spirit can produce the fruit. I mean, really we're just really the branch and the branch it says abide in the branch. Well, the branch, if you look out at a tree, it's not trying really hard to hang out there. No. <laughs> it just ha it just is there. So abiding really is just remaining, isn't it? Yes, it That's is. That's what that word means. It means just remaining. And so, so what does that mean? Well, recognize that we we're just we're the branch. He's the vine. So without him, we can do nothing. Jesus told us that. Yes. You know, I love that. We Christians think we're greater than Jesus. We, I mean, we wouldn't say that. No, nobody would say that because only we love the Savior. We love him, but we act like it because we think, you know, Jesus said, of my human self, I can do nothing. Mm. John, nothing. John 5. No thing. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. I am nothing and I can do nothing. Same thing. Okay. But what I see the Father do, I do. So what he's saying is that the, I'm a human. Now, everybody knows he was 100% human, 100% divine. Yes. We like to think of him as divine 100%, but we have a hard time really catching the truth that he was 100% human. So he, the human Jesus, had to operate by faith, just like you and I. Yes. So he had to believe that the Father was in him doing the works, and he says that. He says, I don't have my own works. It's the Father that does mm. the works. I don't have my own words. It's the Father that does the words. I don't have my own life. See, that, that's what we know. Wow. We don't have a separate life of our own. And Jesus, if we think we do, we're deceived mm. because we're becoming a something instead of a nothing. And nobody wants to be a nothing. No, no. <laughs> but yet, when you're thrashed like Bill uses that term enough by the outer law and you realize that it's right to be a nothing mm. it's not wrong then you'll relax and rest in the fact oh it's great news it's great news to be a nothing oh, so but i'm containing 
the perfect all. Mm -hmm. That's pretty big. Now you can come alive as a human being. Yes. You, your, our personalities are absolutely thrashed, like you say, because we're only, I say we operate like a lame duck, really. It, we're, we don't know how to function. So we know Jesus, but we're all dysfunctional. Mm. So now we're learning how to function by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, know, walk by the Spirit, and all this is always by faith. Wow, isn't it? it is, Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I used to tell, I like to tell people, you know, I was once a hopeless sinner, but it'll take everything to get me to know I'm a helpless saint, mm. that I'm a vessel, a nothing in and of itself you know it's uh, it'll take a lot for me to get to know that you know um and so you have to get beaten up a lot by the law um yeah was, sylvia just said a mouthful you know in john 15 it says apart from me you can do nothing so jesus says of my own self in john 5 that i can do nothing and then he, he says to us apart from me you can do nothing so as sylvia said she said an atom bomb there she said, I think sometimes Christians are trying to be better than Jesus. Jesus said he, he couldn't do anything. Right. And then he tells us we can't do anything, but do we think we can do something? A lot of times, most of the time, I did. Me too. You know, I thought I was a branch. It could do all this stuff. But if you think of a branch broken off from a tree laying on the ground, is it doing, can it do anything in and of itself? But don't we beat that branch up because it's not producing fruits on the ground? We do. We beat, beat that poor branch up. We do. we do. And she mentioned, you know, if you abide in me. So I always tell people, if, the conditional if, you throw that out and you say you do abide. Because the branch is already in the vine because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Right. You just remain. And Ken Gullickson would give this illustration. He, he said, does a branch do this? Like here, here's the branch. I'm the vine here. Does the branch do this? Apple. <laughs> Is it producing it? No. It's just simply resting in the vine, and the life of the vine is living through the branch. Mm. You know, as you simply have faith in another. Well, you know, everybody's worried about sinning. They're worried that if we, you know, really are this free, then we're just going to run out and do all kinds of sins. But, you know, we've discovered that the Bible really is saying that the power of sin is not grace. Mm. The power of sin is the law that's poured on us. <laughs> the Bible says right. that in 1 Corinthians 15, 56. The power of sin is all the law. The power, See, grace really sets us free so that the Holy Spirit then can operate through us. It, 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 faith really... Uh, motivates the Holy Spirit to then act through us. But law thwarts us and, and makes us think that the vessel can produce its own righteousness, really. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people in the world say, well, I don't want to be a Christian because there's so many self-righteous people. Well, you know, they've got a point. Mm -hmm. Because sure. I was that way. So was I. And he was that way <laughs> because we were trying to produce our own fruit. We were trying to be our own righteousness. So, you know, they, they do have a point. So, but you know what? People are drawn to people that are free. The people that really are putting their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, this is ultimate faith. That you're putting your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to live your life through you and as you. Mm -hmm. And it never is really you living the life. No. But he's no. living it as, as if it is you. But you know what we don't know, and maybe we'll talk about this, is that we never have lived our own life. No. Because even before we were Christians, there was another spirit, another power source, another nature living in us, causing us actually to be the sinners that we were. Yes. Not to take the responsibility off of us so that we don't repent. We don't say no, that. No. <laughs> but it actually, the producer of sin is a satanic spirit. That's isn't right. It? That's right. The producer of righteousness is the Holy Spirit. Right. The divine nature. The yep. divine nature. So we have the old nature, and now through the cross we have the divine nature, but we've never had a nature of our own. <laughs> never. That's the real key, folks. It I is. mean, that's the real liberating secret. That's 
that's what Norman Grubb, that was his last commission really, that's really what he laid his life down yes. for was to get out. That we've never been an independent self is what Sylvia is talking about, never had a nature of our own. Mm -hmm. When I heard him say that, never had a human nature of my own, you know, uh, that took some explaining. I needed to understand more about that, which we'll do. Right, we will. We're going to do that next time. I see our time's just about over. So thank you for joining us. I know you're really enjoying this. And uh, I always enjoy being with Bill. And like I said, uh, I brought my technician out here so that we could come out to California and get a little bit of sunny Pasadena <laughs> and be with the sunshine that lives in this precious man, friend of mine. And I want you to get to know this man too. If anybody in this area, you know, contact me on my web website and I'll get you in touch with this, this great man of God. And uh, so thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to continue this on the next Liberating Secret program. So thank you for being with us and may God richly bless you. Good time. See ya. I hope that you've been blessed by today's program. These programs have been brought to you by Christ Our Life Ministries, based in Louisville, Kentucky. If you would like to know more about us, please check out our websites, www.theliberatingsecret.org and www.spiritbroadcasting.net. The Liberating Secret is our literary site. We offer many articles by many authors, and I have my own writings on it as well. You will find a bookstore where you will be able to purchase many of my own books and booklets as well as other authors who also teach the truths of liberation. We have an online monthly newsletter that you might want to sign up for. Check it out. You're going to be blessed if you do. Now for our, up, our other website, which is the Spirit Broadcasting Network. All of our past TV and radio programs are being broadcast on this website. If you have a favorite program, you might want to find it here. If you are interested in any events such as conferences, retreats, or home meetings that we are conducting, please check out our calendar that you will find on both of our websites. We have an annual conference here in Louisville, Kentucky in May. It is always held the weekend after Mother's Day. We have great fellowship, great teaching, and great music by Ron Block, and that he's from Nashville. Twice a year, I teach a woman's retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Women, don't wait to sign up, sign up for Polly's. You will love it. If you would like to have a meeting in your area, please email me at sylviap at theliberatingsecret.org. And thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. Right, Sylvia Pierce, host of Liberating Secret, right, invites you to the 13th annual God Unlimited Enrichment Weekend, May 15th through the 18th. Sylvia, as well as many other teachers, will investigate to its roots of what the liberating life really is and how it is experienced. There will be Bible-based explanations clarifying our wonderful union relationship in Christ. The mystery, hid now, made manifest, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But the Spirit revealed to you how to turn defeat into victory and self-condemnation into self-acceptance, God's way. We will begin on Thursday, May 15th at 7 p.m., continue through Friday, Saturday, and end at noon on Sunday. The conference is held here in Louisville on the Pierce's property. Email us at sylviap at theliberatingsecret.org. That's sylviap at theliberatingsecret.org. Or go to our website at www.theliberatingsecret.org for more information.